What's going on guys? Hope all you are doing. Welcome to a new video tutorial from IPNWIS in the series of learning Node.js. So we've come to the last, or well, the last story on the series of learning Node.js. If you are not, uh, like, we haven't watched the last tutorials, please make sure to watch them because we've done or we've covered the beginners thing about Node.js. So in today's one, actually, we're going to create a Node.js server using the Express framework. So I'm gonna ch tell you or walk you through around how you can set up your own server using Node.js and you can like uh, control the routes and all of this kind of things using Node.js since we are going to use it as a server side programming language or, or like a development environment. So this is our project, so I've been working on the whole series. All I've done is just create a server.js for just creating or running up or starting the server actually for our Node.js application. So for that, we're gonna need some frameworks or to install some modules first. First things first, we need to install uh, Express and this is like the main modular we're gonna to use or the main framework we're going to use for starting or start running the server and we're gonna use it or uh, save it as a dependency and just press install and since or use npm install express dash save so just like this and it's gonna be save it for you i've already gone and done this before so no need for that the other thing you are going to need actually is a body parser and for that why using the body parser actually to parse the request parameters so let's say you are going to send a post request an http post request and you assign some like data your like form encoded data for example the username the password we're going to use this module in order to parse in the json parts and give us this data right out of the box on our server here so also npm make sure to npm install body dash parser and dash save dash not dev just save as, as a main dependency and you are ready to go for the installing the body parser and you're ready actually to go to start making your uh, server in here so let me go back over here i don't know if this is not working correctly so let me just get rid of that and we are good to go in here so for the server we're gonna run express in here so let me just declare or require the express framework or the main function of express and using require say require and express so you should see some kind of enter license another thing we're gonna declare our application so we need to initiate our express application so express and we put in here the uh, only like this so this is gonna initiate and return the instance of our express framework and the other thing we're going to declare is the body parser since we are going to use this as uh, a middleware for our application in here. So if you're not familiar with the middlewares or something or some kind of a check-in, like run when you submit a request to a server, to a certain server actually, you, you, sub, you send this request and the middleware runs before that request is being uh, submitted. So we like some do some kind of a token checking or something. This is how like authentication works. It uses mid middlewares to check some data before it submits or take you to the, that request then respond to you. So this is how it actually works. Also we're gonna require in here, as I've said, we use require and body parser. So here it looks like we are ready to go. Other things, as I've said, we need to use the body parser for that. So we need just to use app.use body parser dot json. And the other thing you need to use this uh, is the URL encoded in here. So let me just grab this from my other code in here and just copy paste this. So just make sure to put that into, into your code if you are intending to mode post the request. So this is like very, very is essential things. Um, uh, JSON parser. So I'm just gonna parse you the JSON data, data you're gonna send from the post request. So now just for running a very very basic server, we're going to do app.listen and that for listening on a certain port and for that port we're gonna define the port up here. So for that port we're gonna just say the 3000 port. Like the, the like the simplest port you're gonna run on your machine. Make sure to choose a free port, not used by any servers or any application on your machine out here. So here put the port and the other or the second parameter is the handler gonna uh, send back once the server is started and we're just gonna console log server 
started on port and we just can continue the port over here and this is all you need to do just now node.js and run the server but one thing i want to show you before that is you can use the script and do the packet.json you can go to the script as you can see here and you can add your custom script for running or starting the server for you so rather than just every time type node and server.js since we have put it other code into the server.js over here so every time you put that you can put that under here so like run server and we put node server so dot js this gonna make it looks very very fine and it gonna just make your life easier uh, whenever using scripts in here so now all we need to do is after saving that of course going back and we can do npm run server this is gonna run our server for us and we should see server start on port in a couple of seconds in here so as you can see run the server and server start on port 3000 now your server is running but it's not it, it can't accept any any requests so if you go here and like we go to the local host since we are running its own local host and put the ports we are using 3000 we are going to get an error because we have no routes and routes actually the 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 route gonna tell where your server to look for so whenever like you submit something like e users this is a route like e users and i don't know get name for example some api this is also another route so this is how you can submit route and we need like to define uh the constant route in here so we need to define to tell our server whenever the user submits the home page or the uh the default route or the home route over here just send him back a get request or send him the response that he needs to do so let me just show you that with a quick uh, hello world example so to access route is under the app the main application object over here and using the route method the first parameter it takes the route in here is that we were talking about so for the home route we're gonna just put the forward slash in here and the second one it takes the handler so whenever it submits that route it gonna just re uh, handle that or call back this function so this is like the callback function whenever the user submits this particular route we put in here so uh, you can use it that but you can also specify for that for using every single possible http request type but for us we are going just to use the get request type you can use any request type in here post put delete whatever http request in here it supports all of them but since we are just using basic browser in here we're just gonna use the get or the gets pretty much will work over here so here as I've said, this is going to take to the callback and for, under the callback parameters, there is going to be two main objects is the request that the users have submitted and also the response that we need to send back to the user. So the request, whenever I submit this one, I send an HTTP request and whenever I, I get into this, I need to send him back a response. So this is like how HTTP protocol works with a request and response uh, system. So this is how it basically works for the response we can use just response dot send hello world and here if we just save this and also make sure to restart your server whenever you do changes to your server.js file for changes to take effect so here we need to start the server i don't know why it's not stopping but let me just delete that and an npm run server again so you can also use control C to start the server, then rerun the server uh, or restart the server. Now, if we go to our browser, submit this again, and we should see some kind of hello word shining up on the ground over here. So this is like a basic text. So a very, very simple, as I've said, you just receives a request then receives a, a, a response back so you can send anything you can also send an html file on you and you can like some learn about the uh body parsers and all of this blade template and engines with the template engines you can work on when you already use it in that it's a very very advanced topic but this is like the basic architecture of a web server so as simple as that you can send the get request now what about middlewares how can you use them 
Method rules are very very useful for any application out there, either for authentication, either for security reasons. You can check for some kind of session token, then tell whether this is like a, a robot or a real person try to connect to your website or to your server, and do a lot of lot of other things. But it's mostly or widely used for authentication purposes. So we can use the middleware by submitting app dot use. But it's actually going just to take two parameters as well or three pretty much so the, the request they are gonna send also the response and the next one or it is the next object and the next object tell us or tells the middleware where to go next so whenever we some authenticate something or check we do some checking we need to move on to the next request we submit or call the next method this is like something like a callback we need to call in order to move to the next request and so on and so forth so this is like how middlewares work i'm gonna use that for just a very very simple example like submitting a token and checking against that token if the token is right then we're gonna let's or like respond with a uh, user authenticated uh, otherwise we say you don't have the right to authenticate or to access this server so like very very basic thing so for that we're going to use the postman in here for doing http and callbacks or requests and response like what if you don't know what is this one it is like some kind of a tool set like lets you to submit request and analyze the data you get on the response and manage all the get requests or the different type of http requests and all those kind of things in one toolkit and here it's free to download just search for postman.com and you can easily download that so here as i've said you can submit localhost so localhost forward slash and we're gonna do some here so let's go back in here and do another route so for the other routes we're going to use the post request and we're gonna check against I don't know auth so shortcut for authentication and as I've said we're gonna put a post request in here for the post request we're gonna use the request and response and we can go ahead and check for this one so we're gonna go back for this for a second here we need to check the headers so under the headers if we go under the headers this one we're gonna put some kind of a token so i'm gonna put token and we're gonna some put some kind of a token over here so for that we're gonna analyze this so analyze the request and to access the headers that have been sent on the request just put the headers and put the header name you want to access for this one we're gonna put the token in here so token if the token equals node.js up for example this is just a very very basic example uh, otherwise you in in a real uh, case scenario you can check for a really really long uh, token over here and an encrypted things or you can even use json web tokens with this one by the way i'm going to explain json web tokens on a very very soon in the channel so stay tuned for that anyway so when we do that we're gonna put some request and skip equals true so if that exists we're gonna just skip the authentication otherwise we are going to request skip equals false and at the end of that we're gonna call the next in order to tell the middleware to move to the next request though so this is like very very simple and how easy it is look at this just checking for the headers i can access the headers then putting the skip to true otherwise put the skip the request equals false then on the route or on the next request we can access this skip um well uh variable actually and we can tell whether it's true or false so we can also do some checking here if request dot skip so which means dot skip it is true then we're gonna use response dot send uh okay authenticated so like we are authenticated else we are going to send response dot send um no you 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 can't okay so i can't type you can't access that and let me just change this one over here so you can't access that and as simple as that we can send this messages over here by checking the request.skip now enter the postman and that's gonna allow us 
to do some checking we're gonna put the same value in here and check if this is gonna work or not so we'll put the same value into the token remember we got some enders token over here then we do the request and make sure you are on the right route over here we are not into the right route so let me just copy uh, oath and make sure to run the server as well so npm run server and uh, let me just put that under the authentication so wait for the server to run and make sure whenever you do changes to that rerun the service so send and you can actually see cannot get authentication so you cannot get that um there's something going on over here so let's try to stop the server and rerun it well since we are getting that so we're using this this like seems to be legit so let me just check out my other code over here for anything that must be bad or something so everything seems to be fine over here uh, let's just rerun the server again and see what is going on and uh, the server is running now localhost port 3000 everything seems to be fine i try to send and i still can't get the authentication and i probably believe that um since we're not using the uh, content type application x ww form in, you're encoded okay yeah so that was the reason actually so whenever you send the request make sure to set on the headers if you are using postman of course make sure to set the header content type and application forward slash x dash www form url encoded to tell the application that we are using the url encoded form uh, architecture over here in order to make it learn so and we should put just the token node.js application and we send the request and boom we're gonna get okay authenticated now if we try to remove the token over here we send the request back again and now you can't access that resource so as simple as that you can use middleware to check whether or not it works or not and do some checking so as you can see it's very very basic and very very simple to use the route and manipulate all the data that can be sent and received back so all of that is very simple another thing i want to like cover before finishing that is how you can send rather than sending just a static text how you can send a real HTML file back so whenever you access that get resources like the home page you send this index.html file it's very simple actually just using the send file and the send file takes an absolute path not a relative path as you can see in here we have the server.js and the index.html on the same directory but we can put uh, forward slash index.html it's not gonna give us an error so it takes an absolute path that's why we're gonna use the standard path uh, modular from node.js just require path and you can use it out of the box so here you put path dot resolve so path resolve and this is gonna resolve us or return an absolute path from a relative path here we put the relative path so index.html and everything gonna look file so response send file and we send the absolute path now make sure to uh, start the server or restart the server over and over and again so let me just go ahead and start the server uh, again so npm run server and like actually scripts or doing custom scripts on node.js is very very useful for you so now after it runs we can go ahead and under our browser we just submit localhost over here and we should see the from the other side work page because i've been doing some testing over here so from the other side so if you go to look in this one from the other side it's our index page and we have html page as the title the same thing over here so as simple as that you can send files you can you can do a lot of things actually there's a lot of more advanced way to cover that but there was very basic thing to cover on that series before the end of series actually so that was it actually guys for the basic setup of node.js and express framework server so thank you guys for watching i really do hope you enjoy if you have any problems issues make sure to comment them in the comment below very happy to check this out and for, don't forget push that like button i'll be very happy as well so see you or I'll catch you in the next video tutorial